Um, but obviously Najee gets the up gets the up for elusiveness because he's been consistent in the 30s the high 30s in 2019 and 2020 when it comes to elusiveness and like I said that's where he gets the comparison to Cam Akers for his footwork and that is something that we're definitely going to need period because like I said offensive line is going to require those guys to be elusive yeah, yeah. What's poppin'? Welcome back to another great episode of Simone with the Spizzles. I'm Simone and bring you guys the daily sports talk. So if you're new here, if you're old here, you haven't subscribed to the channel yet, make sure you like this video, make sure you leave a comment, make sure you subscribe and keep rocking with me. So guys, there's also a link in my description box to buy me a coffee to help fuel this channel. And thank you to everyone who has bought me coffee so far. Um, but yeah, that link is down below to buy me a coffee. Also, there's a link in my description box to subscribe to our podcast, Tough Calls, where me and Dylan have some of your favorite sports analysts, former and current athletes, chop it up with us on the pod. So you don't want to miss any of that. So make sure you go check that out. Also, make sure you turn your notification bells because as you know, it's busy time. It's time for us to get busy, us to make some moves, make some decisions. So you don't want to miss any of these videos. So turn your notification bells because the video is coming like boom, 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 boom. And you don't want to miss it. But let's get right to this video. As you see by the title, as you see by the thumbnail, this video is Travis Etienne versus Najee Harris. ACC boy versus SCC boy. You guys know I'm an ACC girl, NC State Wolfpack. Let's get it. He went to Clemson, but it's ACC nonetheless versus the SCC guy in um Najee. so obviously these two guys are two of the top running backs coming out of this draft so let's talk about what the, who's let's compare these two guys they're both obviously top running backs coming out of the draft but let's break down the differences between the two now Najee harris okay is six foot to 230 pounds so he's already the bigger bigger back um travis is much smaller as five foot ten 205 pounds both of these guys were top in their class obviously coming out of high school of course you're going to bama you're gonna be talking your class coming out of high school you coming to clemson you're gonna be talking your class coming out of high school but we're going to look at some factors that differentiate them though and one of the things that differentiates the two that the scouts are kind of looking at is that Najee harris is already 23 years old now it's not concerning for me but you guys know that the running back position is not a position where there's necessarily longevity. So some people, some scouts have that as a knock against Najee just because he's already 23 years old. So he's got 23 years worth of action on them knees. Okay, so that is something that some scouts have a knock for Najee. That's not something I'm really concerned about because he's already NFL ready, meaning he's going to come in and already produce. So I'm not worried if he was a guy who's going to be coming off the bench developing um that we have to develop then yeah because it's like you might not really sprout until you're like 25 and that's concerning but he's 23 he's already NFL ready so I'm not worried about that so the biggest let's first talk about the elusiveness between those two guys between Najee and between um Travis so elusiveness is based on how many tackles pretty much you avoided um obviously our offensive line is busted so a uh, running back that has you know high elusiveness is something that we definitely need because you got to dink and dive them tackles because the way our offensive line looking now you got to be elusive boy okay you gotta be the, you gotta be Howard Houdini because them pass rushes is gonna be coming so obviously it's better tacklers in the nfl than it is college this is obviously based off college but hopefully it translates directly for these two guys which i have no doubt it will so in 2020 36.9 percent of Najee's runs he avoided a tackle or made someone miss so on 36.9 percent of his runs in 2020 he avoided a tackle and made someone miss which is very huge compared to um travis in 2020 his he on 26 point six percent of travis's runs he made someone miss or avoided a tackle and obviously that's a 10 percent difference between travis and Najee. but Najee is really 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 accredited for his footwork and that's why he gets a lot of comparisons to cam Akers because he's very he's really accredited for his footwork um 
Najee's number has pretty much been consistent when it comes to the elusiveness in 2020 and 2019. In 2020 and 2019, however, Travis did have a big dip from 2019 to 2020 because in 2019, on 42.2% of his runs, almost half of his runs, he avoided a tackle or made someone miss. But that obviously dropped off to 26.6%. So his numbers did go down on elusiveness. Um, who knows? Maybe. That could, you can look deeper into that. Maybe the lanes was wide open, the holes was wide open. He didn't have to make someone miss. Or it could mean, you know, more stout of defensive lines. Um, but obviously, Najee gets the up gets the up for elusiveness because he's been consistent in the 30s, the high 30s in 2019 and 2020 when it comes to elusiveness. And like I said, that's where he gets the comparison to Cam Akers for his footwork. And that is something that we're definitely going to need period because like I said offensive line is going to require those guys to be elusive so another big thing is contact balance okay so when it comes to contact balance this is where Travis really gets the up okay and that's where it's like yards after um contact so after you get hit how many yards are you getting after that first initial contact like you know Derrick Henry can drag somebody with him it's like how many yards are you getting after contact the contact balance so for Najee in 2020 he averaged 3.2 yards after contact and in 2019 he averaged 3.5 yards after contact and that just shows how consistent he's been since 29 from 2019 to 2020 and obviously um Najee is the bigger back so, of course, it's going to be harder to bring him down after contact. Travis yards after contact were crazy, though. In 2020, he averaged 3.8 yards after contact. In 2019, five. He averaged five yards after contact. That's freaking huge. Now, that number did drop off to 2020. Like, his elusiveness dropped off from 2019 to 2020, where I'm giving Najee the up just from being consistent. But that is where he really gets compared, compared to Alvin Kamara. That's where Travis gets his comparison to Alvin Kamara is because of his contact balance is huge. So, both of those guys, you really can't go wrong. Najee has been more consistent from 2019 to 2020. But Travis put up some crazy numbers in 2019. Five yards after contact crazy now let's talk about um receptions so Najee is the more versatile guy when it comes to um uh, receiving um where he can line up he's been involved in multiple routes not just um the little dump off pass but he's been involved in wheel wheel routes he's been involved in vertical routes he's very he's much more versatile when it comes to being a receiving back and that is going to be a huge up in Nick Sirianni's offense because obviously the Colts really use their um, running backs in those little short reception um, routes. So Najee has way more experience when it comes to receptions though. Um, so he had 43 receptions in 2020. He was number two in the running back class when it comes to receptions. Travis, he doesn't have as much experience in receptions. Um, but he is really good in the short passing game. But Najee has much more experience and he has been involved in different routes. But that's just uh, up to Najee's size. But like I said, the guy is 6'2", 230 pounds versus the, the smaller Travis. But that's a big up for Najee to be involved in the um, receiving game. So pass protection. This is huge. A blocking running back is huge. Pass protection is huge because... You got to have a running back that can block, and that's what gets you on third down. If you are a blocking running back, you can be on the field on third down. Um, so this is huge, these numbers that we're about to get into. Um, obviously, it's huge for a team who it needs help on the offensive line, i.e. the Philadelphia Eagles obviously need help on the offensive line. And so having running backs that can also block is definitely important. So let's get into their um, pass protection. So... Um, for Najee, so he allowed four hurries and five pressures on 40 snaps in protection. Okay, he ranked 18 out of 22 um, in pass protection. So he was pretty much at the bottom in pass protection when it comes to those eligible running backs. I think you had to be involved in like over 100 of those pass protection snaps. So 
like I said, in 40, in 40 snaps, he allowed four hurries and five pressures. Not the best. Um, Travis, though, he um, allowed four hurries and five pressures on 66 pass block attempts. So he allowed the same amount of pressures, but on 66 attempts versus the 40 attempts from Najee. So obviously big ups to Travis being able to be a pass blocker. And that's huge. That's huge. That's huge. And I would have thought it would have been Najee because of his size, but okay, Travis playing big, okay. So that's very, that's very, 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 very huge. So when it comes to scoring ability, um, Najee had 26 rushing touchdowns in 2020, um, 39 touchdowns over the last two seasons, first in touchdowns. Um, Travis had um, 33 rushing touchdowns in the, his past 27 games. But, you know, obviously Travis is playing with Trevor Lawrence, who likes to run the ball a lot, run the ball in for scoring touchdowns. So that could take away a little bit from Travis's touchdowns. But guys, I'm thinking if you made it this far in the video, shout outs to you because this has been a lot, a lot of stuff we're breaking down. But Travis obviously got the ups when it comes to pass protection. So if I'm a team who has a weak offensive line, I'm definitely looking for Travis, right? If I'm Travis has the big up when it comes to pass protection, um, which is huge for a running back. Um, Najee pretty much has more overall balance though he's been more consistent over the past two years than travis has been consistent over the past two years so it's definitely tight between the two um the yards after the catch i mean the yards after contact is huge for me and the fact that Najee has been involved in much more um re receiving routes is also huge for me as well because he's gonna be a much more versatile um not saying that travis can't evolve into being much more versatile but Najee is instantly already going to be ready to be much more versatile so I don't think you really go wrong between the guys but I'm definitely going Najee overall he's been more consistent over the past two years and he's going to be more versatile um a bigger guy obviously so can be involved on more downs just off the strength of size and ability um but let me know what you guys think if you made it this far in the video shout outs to you um also I wanted to let you guys know that I'm going to be covering the ACC tournament. I'm super excited to be covering the ACC tournament because I'm from Greensboro, North Carolina. I grew up as an ACC basketball fan. Like I said, I went to NC State. My sister went to Duke. My other sister went to Chapel Hill. My mom went to Virginia, UVA. So we're ACC born and bred, ACC led. Okay, I watched more college basketball growing up than I watched NBA basketball. So I'm just letting you guys know this just so you know that on my page, I'm gonna be posting ACC um, tournament content. like interviews stuff from the game blah 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 so i don't want you guys being confused when i start posting acc stuff acc tournament stuff because i'm covering the acc tournament professionally for my job so i hope you guys don't just be disliking those videos just because it's not eagles or it's not sixers um because this is my personal youtube page but i gotta put some of my professional stuff on here as well so that you know your girl need to get paid she need to get her jobs you know what i'm saying so i gotta do what i gotta do so hopefully you guys are well-rounded sports fans and you guys like that content but thank you guys so much for watching this video um let me know what you guys think let me know if you want to see more videos like this um make sure you like make sure you comment make sure you subscribe and check out my description box to buy me that coffee though also check out my description box to subscribe to tough calls bye